That does sound like a bit of a tragedy, Jamie. <laughs> Although, well, it, it's, it, it is a bit of a tragedy for the Steenbuck, but I think it's a very nice story for beautiful Shadow and her cub. I think that's the wonderful thing about creatures out here in the wild. Like, obviously we stress because we get emotionally attached to them and we don't want them to suffer. And I think it's a very human response, just being able to be, have this empathy towards other species. But it, I think it speaks wonders for them, just how resilient they are. You can never write any of these animals off. Like even with Shadow's very bad limp, look at her. She's even still providing for her cub, which I think it is a wonderful thing. So beautiful. I think I think she wants to, to feed and I think she's moved a little bit closer to the cub because she's also now getting a bit hungry but the cub is <laughs> not too happy. Look at that growling going on and that hissing just straight at the cub. I think Shadow is just, you know, reassuring the little one that she's the one that made the kill and she is going to eat. Stevie, you're wondering if they always let the cub eat first. Well, now that she's brought back the cub, the cub likely hasn't fed for a few days. So yes, yeah, she's going to allow the cub to feed first. But also remember, when we got here, she had already fed on the steambok a little bit. So I think it was, it's, she's probably still very hot. We can see her panting still quite heavily. She went all the way to fetch the cub, came for a drink and then carried back here. But when she wants to feed, no doubt that she'll let she'll <laughs> lay down the law, and, the law and tell the cubs like no it's my turn to eat now so give me give me the carcass she is looking so big look at that pretty face so yeah they they do they like when they just going back to your question now thinking of all the experience that i've had with mother leopards bringing their cubs back to a kill often they'll just let them go ahead first but also on i would say 90 percent of the cases where i've seen it they've also already fed a bit on the carcass and that's why they they've brought them back in and they're happy to have them And like I said, I think Shadow is working up her appetite. The cub is very skinny, or in the sense that likely she hasn't fed for for a few days, or she hasn't had a very good meal in a few days, so she has, hasn't stopped eating. She's trying to eat as much as she can to try and get as much food in as possible, because, well, the, the kill is on the ground, so there are other potential creatures that could come and try to get the kill from them. And I'm sure she's just actually just hungry. Who knows, maybe Shadow will be a little bit hungry later, a little bit angry and hungry, and then <laughs> she'll take the, the carcass from the cub, or she'll start feeding, and then just move the cub a little bit away. So pretty. Look at that cub. And those pretty paws in the way. She already knows what to do. You see, the Shadow is still very hot, so I reckon she's actually been walking for quite a, uh, quite a bit. Because her panting, it's not, I've actually even put on a jersey. I think that that was a bit of optimistic, because now I'm actually very hot. But it just gives you an idea that it's not that hot, so she shouldn't actually still be panting. But I think it's more for the effort of what she's done, of going all the way where she's gone and then come back all the way. And who knows how long she's actually been hunting, perhaps she's actually been hunting all throughout the day. I'm sure she only made this kill sometime either during midday or the middle of the day after drive or sometime during the drive or late during the drive this morning just judging by how much meat there is and by the state of the of the little stamba carcass Macy, you're wondering until what age the... Ooh, talking about hoisting. Somebody's being optimistic and putting on a show. So they normally, they're, they're nursed until they're about maybe six, seven months old. And uh, after, but they are introduced to meat when they're just about a few weeks old. So normally when they're about maybe six to eight weeks old, uh, milk stops being enough uh, or not being enough for them to be able to grow so the mothers start introducing them to kills so either they'll they'll start bringing um, smaller things to the den side wherever it is that they leave them or more often than not once they become a little bit more mobile when they're about three months old or so then they start moving them around from den site to den site bringing them to to kill sites and well it's still happening a few months later 
she's left the cubs somewhere, uh, somewhere that she deems safe. And then she went on hunting and then her hunting, oh look at that aggression between the two of them. Definitely having a mother-daughter moment here. And she's gone back to fetch the cub and then brought it all the way back here so that she can feed. Huh? Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> yeah, mama said it's her turn to eat. <laughs> oh, shame, now she's sulking. <laughs> So pretty. Yeah, I think, well, it's hard to tell from here, but I think Shadow's actually had a few bites. And now she's just let the cub know. And I wonder if the cub is actually going to go around the other way and come back from the other side of the tree and try her luck again. So obviously Shadow's made this kill, so she also needs to feed from it. Yeah. I, w I would love it if she went all the way around. It would be very funny just trying to play with mom and be like, ha! you think that I can't eat from this side and actually when she got it and she started moving it I think she was actually trying to move it away from her mother so she could carry on eating but it seems like Shadow's being a good mother now and she's plucking some more of the hair so I just saw a little bit of fluff coming out of her mouth and she's carried on eating maybe just trying to clean up the the hair so she's moving it around so she uses her tongue that's very rough to try and get all of the hair out so that she can get to the skin a little bit easier and then obviously start cutting through the skin now unfortunately i don't think we're really going to be able to go around or where she is because there are quite a quite a few stumps and it's quite a secluded spot and i very likely that's the reason why she chose this particular spot to to leave the kill also i don't think she killed this team too far from here but it just it would prove quite difficult for us to try and get there and i think we would disturb them more than anything which i don't really want to do i think that she's done a very good job so rather not get in her way are you going to move the kill now maybe she's want to teach the cub a lesson and just take it away <laughs> be like you don't want to share you don't get dinner Our beard, you are wondering if hoisting is, is an instinct or if it's learned behavior from the cubs, seeing that Shadow d normally doesn't hoist her kills. I think it's 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 a bit of both. I think um, it's a lot of instinct, but it's also learned behavior because we know her sister Tandy does hoist her kills quite often. So, well, at least as far as I know. So if I'm being wrong, please um, correct me using the hashtag Safari Live. But as far as I know, Shadow is very well known for never hoisting her kills and I think that's just something very particular about her but it's also area dependent so animals learn very quickly by experience that if they put their kills or animals, leopards, that if they put them up trees and that they won't have to worry too much about other potential predators coming and stealing their kill. But in areas, for example, where you don't have many hyenas, there are less leopards that will hoist their kills and it's widely documented. In this particular area, because we have the numbers of hyena that we do, often you'll see that they'll put them up in the tree. So I think it will it will be quite interesting later on to, to actually see if the cub does decide to be like its mother and it learns that, well, you know, if, if my kill just gets stolen, I'll just go and make a new one. Or if it'll actually try and be more like its grandmother and perhaps even like its aunt and distant relatives in the, in the same uh, lineage to try and put them up trees. Because I'm sure eventually Shadow will like put something up there and then just show her but they're very protective of their kill so I think perhaps instinct plays a bigger part and then just experience from there I think she's just crushing bone now beautiful seems like Taylor McCurdy is having a lot of fun today out in the Maasai Mara just as we are with this beautiful two girls so it seems like she's got an odd combination of creatures. A very big one and some very, very lazy ones. So let's go over to her and find out who the real king of the jungle is.